right, here we go. Three, two, one. Boom! And welcome to the Big Honker Podcast brought to you by Hemp Hill Farms. Right now, Hemp Hill's got a special. If you buy anything at all, they're going to send you pet CBD for your dog. <clears throat> Same thing you had on Lou. I'm fixing to put them on Ollie. Makes an old dog's life a lot better. So anyways, check out HemphillFarm.com. And that's H-E-M-P-H-I-L-L. Farm is spelled P-H-A-R-M.com. HemphillFarm.com. What do you got to say, Andrew? It was a lifesaver last night. CBD? Oh, yeah. Did you pretty, get that ass whooped last night yesterday pretty, again? Pretty sore. Pretty sore today. Left shoulder, neck. I'm all stoved up. You know, I was actually thinking about trying to do this when hunting season over, start going to the BJJ, but until you told me. You should. Well, until you told me it hurts you a lot. It does. It well, does. I mean, it's a combat sport, Jeff. I'll be 57. I damn sure don't know if I want to be kind of that kind of ouchies running around. Just do the do the do uh, do everything except for the live rolling. And that looks like that would be fun, but you said it it's is, not fun. It not, there's not one. There's not one part of it that's fun. It is a lot of a lot of you being the nail. But you could go, you could do the. Uh, we got we got a warm up, and then uh, you learn a move, and then there are li- there's a live positional that we do, and then that would be enough for you. And then the end of class is all um, a full live round rolling. Just skip that part. You'd get a great workout, and you wouldn't be too beat up. I'm going to start doing that in February. So. With us today from, where the hell are you from, Greer? Somewhere in the southeast. Well, I'm from Macon, Georgia, but I just got married pretty recently, and we moved down to Jacksonville, Florida, so now in North Florida. Oh, home of the Jaguars. Well, actually, London's home of the Jaguars. That's something to be proud of, huh? So, I know nothing. My geography's terrible. Have you been hit by the hurricanes? So, no. We rain. Yeah. Just rain. Got a little probably. rain, a little wind. And I've been amazed how little people care about hurricanes around here. I thought we were going to have to evacuate from Jacksonville. And everyone told me that just to hunker down. You know, That's because man up. Nine, <laughs> nine out of 10 times, it turns out to be nothing. It's that's that one time when right. it gets you. Then everybody's like, fuck, I wish we would have evacuated. So, are you a go? Well, we got some. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead now. No, go ahead. I said, we got some family in Tampa. Uh, My brother-in-law and his wife live in Tampa, and they got hammered by Helene, the first one. Um, And, I mean, they had water. But they were sending me some pictures from, you know, they had a a ring doorbell, and they were sending me pictures that looked otherworldly when there was just ocean, you know, in your front yard, waves crashing on your porch. But Did they evacuate? I don't know how anybody lives there. Yeah, they got out of there. They came to Jacksonville for this last most recent one. The most recent one, you know, took a turn and hammered someone else, but – they got lucky on that yeah, one. Yeah, it was further south. They thought Milton was going to land in Tampa, and it was further. Ended up being further south, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Maybe in Sarasota is where it made landfall. I'm working on my Florida geography. I didn't. I just thought it was all, you know, New York Junior. And then I moved down here, and now my opinion of it's having to shift a little bit. <laughs> and then uh, poor uh, Lieutenant Dan, you know, he got that big deal to ride out the hurricane in that little skiff that he had, and. Turned out he was not a very, uh, you know, very reputable person. Did he drop the N-word or something on a video? On or a something? video, but, I mean, he'd been arrested for assault and battery on women, assault and battery on cops, and then they took away the deal, and he's like, listen, you should have done your homework before you before you offered me this. Like, I, I could have told you I was a bad guy. <laughs> I, if they offered him a deal, they should have to pay him. But he said, <clears throat> he said, I am in the minority because I'm innocent of the charges. So. Well, of course he is. Everybody in prison is, too, just about. Yeah. So everybody's innocent. Before yeah, we everybody. get into, deny, deny, deny. <laughs> before we get into duck stuff, we got a big football game coming up Saturday night. The dogs are coming to Texas. It's a big one, man. It's a big one. I met a guy and and on Mackinac Island. We went to this this arch rock, and we had me and Michelle had to climb six thousand four hundred and seventy five stairs to get up there. And I, I was huffing and puffing like a fat kid chasing a donut around there. It's killing me. But there was a guy there that had a Georgia jacket on yeah and so i said go dogs to him just being friendly well he assumed i was a georgia fan after that oh. which which i can understand and i told him i said i'm a longhorn fan he's like oh he goes <sighs> can't talk to you he goes we're gonna play three times this year i said it's, it's a possibility we How? could play this week play in the sec championship oh, game okay and then play in the national championship game right but there's a lot it. of football pl- played between now and then but it ought to be a pretty good game. What's your prediction on the game? I know you're going to pick Georgia. It, you have to. Well, I mean, obviously, they're going to smoke them in Austin. <laughs> it's the first time they've ever played in Austin, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know about that smoke them shit, though. What? The new, <laughs> the new rankings came out them. today. Texas Where, is one. Still. I know Texas is one. What's Do you know what Georgia is? Oregon was two. 
I bet they're four or five. They're five last week, I believe, which is about right. That's where they should be right now. Yeah, no, but number five. It, one of my one of my pet peeves about the college football thing is I'm a really good fan, and I got my Georgia stuff back here. You can see it on the I screen back it. there. I got some stuff. Um, I'm a really good fan. I'm a really reasonable fan. And, like, a lot of fan bases are completely unreasonable. If you don't win 13 games, it was a waste of a year. Like, I came out of the Alabama game. And I, like, really liked this team because they were just getting creamed in the first half. And it would have been easy just to roll over. You know, they came roaring back. They lost. But, I mean, I came out of that game, like, being really excited for the team. And so, I, Georgia's got – they got Alabama. They got Tennessee. They got Ole Miss. They got Texas. They got Florida. They play Clemson. I guess super tough schedule. But, I mean, I'd rather them do that and lose two of the games than play UMass 13 times. Well, that's no fun. <laughs> – I'll tell you my prediction: the Southeast Conference, uh, whoever wins this game, I think is going to win the Southeast the, the, the championship or going to go to the championship mm-hmm. game for sure. I think these probably are the two best teams, but Texas A and M's a lot better than everyone gives them credit for. They had a hiccup against yeah. SC or Notre Dame beat them the first game of the year. They're very A they're, and M is very good, and I'm not going to take them lightly because they could beat my Longhorns also. But I I predict that Alabama's coach will be fired within two years because I don't think he's near the coach that Saban is, which nobody hardly is. But I do not think he's gonna, right. T- I do not think he survives two or three years in Tuscaloosa. I Man, that's a tough bar to set. And yep. Saban is your bar. Yep. And that's why it's such a hard job to get to. But DeBoer, I mean, that guy's a winner. He I is. Mean, he did it at Washington. He, he they showed his record when Georgia was playing him, and and it was I mean. I'm making numbers up here, but he's like 60 and six as a head coach. I mean, it was an absurd number. He's a great coach, but I just so, do not think he's going to survive in Alabama. The Alabama, got, they 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 were the better football team, but they almost screwed around and got beat by South Carolina. And I mm-hmm. just I don't I just I I don't think he's going to survive because of the of the Saban bar. If Saban had a bad season at Saban, he'll be back. This guy has a bad season or so; they're going to kick his ass out. Does Vandy Texas still has to play Vandy? Do they pull another upset? No, I don't think so. You don't think so? No, I think if Texas gets big, dangerous, Vandy's two in a row. They got <laughs> Kentucky this last weekend too. Yeah. And maybe they, Vandy's the dark horse. They, should, they could still win it. They only got one conference loss. They should have beat Missouri. Yeah, they, that's it. I, I don't. I, Texas is going to get nobody. I don't think anybody's going to go unscathed through the deal. I think it's going to come down to about four teams. I think Ohio State is better than Oregon. I think they just played in Eugene, Oregon. I think at a neutral side, Ohio State wins that game. I think it's Ohio State, Georgia, Texas, and the fourth team, I don't know who it will be. Um, So I heard a conspiracy about the Oregon coach. He sent the 12th guy out there knowing that it was going to run the clock, and he said – the conspiracy is is that he thought five seconds off the clock was more precious than five yards, and I guess the clock started to roll after that, and the the uh, Ohio State quarterback didn't know that. So really, yeah, I'm watching the game, and all of a sudden there's seven seconds left in the game. I'm like, what the hell happened? Right. It was 22 seconds a minute ago, and then he ran the ball. Yeah, like, that that was a dumb play. What are you doing here, kid? You got it's tough. It it all starts happening really that, quick that, there at the end. If Dan if Dan Landing put twelve people on the field, then give that man coach of the year yeah, right no now. Shit. Right. That's next level. Uh, Ohio State is an is another place I don't understand. I don't understand why anybody in Ohio State would be like wanting to fire Ryan Day. The guy has done a remarkable job there. He's he's not a jackass like Urban Meyer. He's done a really really good job there. But if they don't win the Big Ten, they're like, well, we're gonna get rid of him and get somebody else. Who the hell else are you gonna get? You know, Saban's not going to Tusca or going to uh, Columbus. You know, Urban Meyer's not coming back. You got a great coach that you're the top five team every year. I think so many of these schools have unreal expectations that if they don't win at all, and the people in Lubbock, Texas, are the same way. They got rid of a great coach in Mike Leach, but they would have won nine, ten, or eleven games every year, and that's a great bar for Texas Tech. Yeah, but they had to the optics. Fuck the optics. He locked, he locked that. He locked that kid. He locked the wrong kid in the in the shed. Well, he should have locked him in there twice. His last name wasn't James. Mike Leach would have been there until he died. But that, but so many of these schools do that shit. They get, they just Texas is the same way. If if yeah. if, if they lose five games or four games one year, they're going. Oh, we got to get rid of the coach and start over too. You know. No, it's unreasonable. That's what we're saying. Unreasonable fan base. There's one national champion. Yep. And there's 120 fan bases that somehow find a way to get irritated about yep. that. Er- I mean, you just, there's there's, there's going to be one. Yep. I mean, you know. You should be happy. Old Miss has it right. They have a super reasonable fan base. They know what they got in Kiffin. Like every year, he goes nine and three, eight and four, and he beats LSU or somebody. Like they're super happy with that. I, I think they're one of the better fan bases. 
And go, they go, down the go to a bowl game. Have fun. You know, win your bowl game. Plus, if you walk around the campus yeah. at Ole Miss, all you do is look at good-looking chicks at work. Because I don't think ugly women go to school there. They don't let them in. That's right. Smart, smart move right there. It's like Fox News. <laughs> Fox News only hires hot chicks to tell you good news, and Ole Miss only has hot, hotty toddy, baby. That's right. All right, let's talk fifty ducks. What we got going on right now, Greer? Man, we got all sorts of stuff going on. Last time we talked, we were still in the the planning and the hoping and the dreaming and the keep your fingers crossed phase. Um, I just got back from Kingsville, Ontario at Jack Minor. I know you guys know about those fo- fellas, the, the Bible verse leg bands. Yep. Some of the first, uh, they're the first folks in North America to put on um, an aluminum leg band. So they like to coin themselves the fathers of uh, you know, the uh, aluminum leg band up there. Um, just got back from up there. We, we got a project off the ground. We're going to put 50 GPS trackers on birds with Jack Miner every year for the next five years to do a light pollution study up there. Uh, we partnered with the University of Windsor, Dr. Oliver Love, um, Joe, Joe Vermeulen, and Matt Oliski um, are the two guys at Jack Miner kind of run the show up there. Um, I showed up, brought some cameras, and uh, we put on the first 25 trackers up there, and then we'll put some on geese some more mallards, and uh, get this thing off and running. So I see, okay, so I am on the website, 50ducks.org. You can go there today, get signed up. Dot com, 50ducks.com. Oh, I'm sorry, what, why did I say dot org? Anyway, 50ducks.com, uh, sign up, and you can look at a live map. We've got 23 mallards. They're all up there in Ontario. We're waiting for some cold weather, but you said yep. as of this morning, they're all alive. Yep, and we had lost a couple. Right. Um, you know, we're, we're learning as we go, and, and we're doing this, you know, the 50 Ducks live stream is tangent, tangential to, um, you know, the study they're doing up there and all that good stuff. And we're just repurposing the data um, to get more people in more places to care about waterfowl. Uh, you know, my crusade has always been from the, uh, the education standpoint, getting kids um, involved with it. But, yeah, if you go to 50ducks.com, you can answer to some extent, that age-old question of where are the ducks, because these are where the ducks are yesterday on living birds. We're going to ban 50 a year for five years. Um, we're going to ban them in a lot more places, too. we got some partners across the continent where we're going to do some more banning in the spring. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's the first thing I do every morning. It's morbidly fascinating. As soon as we get a cold front, it'll f- be fun to see where they go. Um, two days ago, we had our first bird move a good bit and it flew uh, 150 miles east towards buffalo new, new york um and where they go tomorrow your guess is as good as mine and it's just it's, it's super fun to watch them yeah how do you real quick i've clicked the duck how do i get back to see all 23 all right so on your on the left hand side a little under the logo you'll see a little arrow Got pointing it. out with green tab yeah i'm on richard i see yeah, so if you click that arrow tab, there's an X up at the top of that one. Click that, it'll take you back. Got it. Now I see them all. Yeah, yep, yep. So, uh, yeah, I clicked Richard because he was by himself. Can you put them on that TV over there? Uh, no, I cannot. Okay. You can log in on your computer, though. I don't even know how to do it. It's your email, and your password is Big Honker, capital B. Easy peasy. So, you went up there. How long were you up there for, banning these ducks? I was up there for a week, flew back for my grandma's 80th birthday, and then I was up there for another week. So two weeks interspersed with a couple days off. Is that – what was what was their process like? I mean, have you been on these banding they, projects before? Yeah. Um, I've been fortunate since we did this. Man, I'm living my dream. It's a blessing whether this thing makes any money or not, you know, TBD. But uh, I've met some really cool folks, and, you know, I've been banding – you know, all over Mexico um, with Tier Davis, which is a group down there. But those guys at Jack Minor, uh, they got it figured out. Um, the, they ban a couple thousand birds a year, um, do a couple traps every every week, two or three. Um, the sanctuary is awesome. You ever find yourself up there? It's a it's a neat place to go. Y'all to come next time we ban. I think you'd enjoy it. That would be a um, badass. But but, but 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 the way they got it set up is they got two two ponds back behind their sanctuary and they grow they got 500 acres of corn they plant and they grow um and and between these two ponds they built there's about a 20 yard you know cut through you know we'll cut through right there and they built a trap that's probably 15 yards across and runs across the cut through they laid gravel across the middle and just had feed troughs out there and they just load it with corn they open both sides of the trap you sit in a deer stand and when there are enough birds in the trap you pull it and they both fall 
go through the gate, handle the birds, and that's that. Hell, Jeff, you were, is it, where, where's their sanctuary at from Detroit? It is 50 miles east. You cross that bridge, the Ambassador Bridge is right there. Mm. It's on the other side of Windsor. I was there, I was, at, I was in Detroit Friday. <laughs> what were you doing up there? Causing trouble? No, me and my wife went on a trip. We went to Mackinac Island. I actually love oh. Detroit. I'm not going to lie to you. I actually, we went down eight mile. I mm. want to do all this shit. We went to a place called Lafayette Coney downtown. A buddy of mine that lives up there took us to eat at this. I wanted to go eat real Detroit food. So he took us to a hot dog cafe downtown. That's real Detroit food? Yeah. I love it. That's Detroit what it is. I got Known to see, for hot dogs? I got to see Tampon Timmy drive by me in a motorcade. I was going to give him the bird, but I was expecting a big bus. He got by me before I realized it was where he was at. Uh, but my my passport expired at the end of September and I haven't got my new one in. So I couldn't have crossed oh. anyways, but I, but I want to go there. What email are we using here, Andy? Cause I'm trying Yours. to look at it. No, my, no, my email's not working on it. I just tried. Greer. Um, it, it's Monday and I'm going to smack the shit out of him. Okay. Uh, I mean, yeah. then you, okay. my Yahoo one or the good, my, the company Whatever one. Whatever he sent to us. I don't, I didn't see it. It's in that. It's in your, let me pull it up. Let me pull up your email. Killing me. I bet he, I bet it's at my company. Jay email. Stanfield 68 at yahoo.com. I didn't see it. It, or you're giving me the wrong uh, password. No. Everybody's got my email. Everybody going to be sending me stuff. Send them nudes. And that's and that's the pot. That's the password. Yes. Anything capital? The B. Well, that's the problem then. That's why I wrote it in capital letters. I don't understand. I can't read writing like that more. I, I, I grew up with cursive. Um. Okay, I'm on now. Jesus Christ. It's funny. It's my, uh, you know, customer service is key. And, and like, we're just getting this thing rolling um, we have about 200 active members on it right now. Um, and it's funny, the emails and the texts that I get from people with questions about, you know, what they're trying to do. And I've just, it's always the same questions and I've built some little templates for my home screen. So I have to now respond to each email individually, right. but this is just, well, you know, maybe I hadn't built it easy enough to play with, but I like to think it's pretty easy. It, yeah. I mean, it's just, you got Jeff over here and I don't know, he can't, he doesn't even know his own email. So, I mean, you're, you're kind of, you're kind of playing with a, with a loaded deck here with Jeff is the problem. Well, I'll be honest with you. My dad was my, um, who's super involved with this, you know, his passion for waterfowl is, is through the roof uh, and his understanding of technology is not. And so he was the test subject throughout the whole building praise. Like I would send it to him and if he couldn't do it, we had to make it easier. Right. And so we were fighting this fine line with what my dad was able to use the computer for. Let me tell you, so we got it where he could do it. I'll tell you something funny. I was at, uh, we we're on Mackinac Island at a restaurant and on it, they have the, um, what's it called? The, the QV, Q, QR code, the QR code to get the menu. And so this, this old couple walked up and I mean, this, this dude here was breathing in heaven's dust. He was 150 years old. I mean, he was old, old, old. Probably had a flip phone. He pulled out an iPhone. And he told his wife, now, gosh, dang it. All you got to do is, she, and he knew exactly what he was doing. So I was watching him do it. And I thought, mm, it does work really well that way. But he, he could have given a tutorial, but that's what I was right. expecting. When he walked up, I thought, all oh, these poor people, I'm going to have to use them, give them my phone, let them have to show them how to get the menu and stuff. And bam, he knew what was going on. And I'm telling you right now, this guy had to be over seriously 90 years plus. I mean, he was old, old, old. Mm hmm. And he he did he he, he was he says, very very smart guy very inept with or not inept he was very apt with do, with doing technology a lot more than I am because I always feel sorry for that old person at the airport not yeah. when we come back from Mexico now you got to do a lot of it my my dad would have had hell doing that shit he'd yeah. be, my dad would have been stuck he'd have been hungry because he'd have never figured that shit out. Yeah, I'm taking my grandfather, like I said, to uh, Lubbock here later on today for a doctor's appointment. And if we had to go to a restaurant that required that, he would. He wouldn't eat. He, would, he wouldn't make it. Luckily, I'm I'm going to be there for him, <laughs> kind of guide him. So, are all these it's pictures? Tough. Are all these like we got a picture? I see a picture of Richard. Is that actually Richard? That's Richard. There, there is there is no creative licenses taking so far. I'm not saying that it will always be that way, but every bird you see on there, that is a picture of that duck. Gotcha. So um, a big thing that we got here is you'll see they got some silly names. Like you got a Donald Duck, you got a Finn, you got a Buzz. Um, you know, I mentioned that my crusade was getting more kids involved in waterfowl because, I mean, y'all know, like hunter numbers are down, recruitment numbers are down. So, uh, you know, we're trying to use technology to get kids who might otherwise not understand waterfowl or not care about them or not know about them. 
we're trying to make it a little more personal for them. So we're letting classrooms adopt the bird. Um, we're giving this platform away for teachers. So any teachers you got listening to the show, all you got to do is shoot me an email. I'll get you on there for free if you'll use it in your classroom. Um, you got a few more birds that they can name. But like, for example, I'll click on Bill Nye. We all know Bill Nye, the science oh, guy. Science guy. Um, named by Miss Edison's class in Shannon, Illinois. Bill Nye was named, uh, you know, will help students explore the wonders of waterfowl migration. So that's their bird. Makes it a little more personal personal for them. Every day they can log on, see what their bird's doing. Before you know it, you're learning about geography, weather, waterfowl, all that good stuff. So like so. Mallard 28, that could be, that somebody could get that duck and rename it uh, Finn or Morning Wood or whatever. Yeah, whatever they want to name, yeah. for sure. Um, still got a few more for the classrooms. And, you know, the reality of the situation is some of them are going to get killed by hunters. Right. That's just... Yeah how this goes and so we have a few birds on standby <laughs> for our for our younger classes well I, you know i don't want a group of second graders to get super fired up for this to name like buzz like one class said you know mascot buzz so they named it buzz like if buzz gets killed tomorrow i will just i will make note of it but buzz will mallard 28 will become buzz so you know so how can you tell that it's still, how can you tell that they're still alive? What, what is it on here that lets you know, Hey, because right now we haven't had any real cold weather. So most of the ducks are probably still right around where you looked at them. Is it? Sure. If you click on Richard. Okay. Down there, you got a little write up all in there about it. Right. Last location, October 14th, 2024. That means he's still alive. That means he pinged the day. Um, species, weight, sex, date tag, tracking status, active. Mm -hmm. If they're dead, it'll get changed to inactive. Right, right. And then what, I mean, yep. you just look for him pinging off of different, like what if he doesn't really leave that place? You know what I'm saying? Like what if he doesn't go up two miles in a day or whatever? Like what if he's what right? If he's, well, then he would be very fun to look at the next day. But but you would still know that he like if he was in the water and he walked up to the bank, ate some breadcrumbs, and then got back in the water all day. Like he's not going, but about two hundred right. yards in a day. Is that still enough movement yep. for you to know that he's he's still with us? For me, certainly, yeah. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see time since last locational update down there, kind of in there. It says twelve hours. Yep. So these things ping every twice a day. Mm -hmm. So if you look at that and it pinged recently, that bird's still alive. If the bird dies, we will make note of it, like in its description, you know, killed on, you know, whatever term we use if it's a kid's bird. But, um, yeah, and, and if it's on this map, it's living. Yeah. So. And then after, because this one you can see, like it's kind of limited on your Zoom. Yeah. Zoom in and all that. So you can't trophy hunt the birds because there would be someone that would want to go kill one just to, you know, keep the backpack. Um, but after 100 days or when the bird moves on the map above the live duck map where you got all those different birds the data will appear there with no zoom in restrictions so if you live in ontario you live in ohio you live up there you, you can you there's no reason you shouldn't have this because you can see exactly where the bird was once it's gone um you know it costs the same as two boxes of shells these days for this platform you'll learn a lot more about ducks just seeing how they move every day what time of the day um you know, it's morbidly fascinating. Okay, I got a question for you. I'm looking at this map, and you've got Eurasian widgeon. Yes, and you've got two of them. How mm -hmm. how did y'all ban two? No, that goes off. You're looking at the. Uh, Am I on the? You looking at the top? What map. do I need to go to? Just scroll down. Live duck map. Okay. Yeah, there you go. And that's what we got. That's live right now. These blue wing teal well, and the no, mallards. The blue wing teal are. He just put those on there to see how okay. much you can. All right, but the mallards are them. mallards are legit right now. Mallards, mallards are legit. They're living. I'm going back up there soon. We will ban some geese and more mallards. Okay, so all the banding is going to take place in the, uh, I guess the east, the Atlantic Flyway and the Mississippi Flyway, or will there be? Will you go all across the United States on that? Baby, we're going to get them. All four, all four flyways in the next five years, we're going to have them. Because people will be more interested, of course, in ducks near them. That's just the nature of it. Um, we got figured out. We're going to band um, with a super cool Tier Davis um, and a group out of Nova Plata, which is in um, Sinaloa, Mexico. We're going down there and band pintails. Those will be Central Flyway, Pacific Flyway birds. We're going to band those this spring, kind of January, February. Um, and then next year... Uh, 
we got a few more things in the works. So, you know, our hope is to be banding birds all over the continent here in the next couple of years. But, uh, you know, for the first fall, since we're just getting this thing started, we're going to band them all. Jack, my bird track, my bird tracker just texted me from Knox city and said, geese are pouring over Knox city. And I figured with this cool weather, they would all spec. So we're getting a lot of our, which is right on time. What's today? The Mm -hmm. 14th, 14th. I mean, they're the 10th to the 17th is when they show up the calendar birds every year. So, um, I want to go back to the Eurasian widgeons because those birds just fascinate me. Because there's, a, did, were you there when y'all banded those? Or did this they, is just this is a, com, oh, a compilation. A whole, okay, okay. I was just curious. Compilation. I, I, my question was, I wondered if they were with a flock of just regular widgeons or just happened to be one Eurasian in there because they're getting to be more and more of them. Yeah. No. This the, the top map that you see. All of that data is compiled from U.S. Fish and okay. Wildlife. Um, North Dakota State, play just anybody that's banded birds that, that has put the data out or that I've emailed and gotten permission to use. Uh, we put that on the map just as a super cool thing because, of course, they're all over the place. So everything on that map, we banded some, but most of those, most, some of our partners banded them, I should say, in previous years. But um, most of the stuff on that map, uh, we had no part in banding. How? So right now on the live duck map it's a limited zoom so that you're not getting any anybody sniping these birds you you said after 100 days uh on some of these ducks you'll be able to zoom in you know no restrictions is how are you gonna like tailor that because like say these ducks start what i'm getting at is i don't really know what i'm getting at like different ducks will be at different places you know what i mean so how's that gonna work so after 100 days, what you got here on this live duck map, it will always be this is limited zoom. Like if you click on either of those blue wing yep. teal, that's what you can see on this map. That data is limited zoom. It's slightly randomized, meaning that even if you break it and you zoom all the way in, what you see is kind of where the duck is. So the data has been moved around. It's been randomized just a little bit, and it's from yesterday. After 100 days, if you go to this top map, it'll appear up I there gotcha. with no zoom in restrictions. So a hundred days from today, you will see today's. And then the next day you will see tomorrow's. tomorrow's. So you'll get it from a hundred days prior. Gotcha. Gotcha. But that won't, that won't yes, be sir. on the live duck map. It'll be on this top map. Yes, sir. And if you see, there's a filter where you can go to active. So you can just filter it to the active birds on your top map. If you want to just look at where those mallards right. are going. Got it. Got yeah. it. So it's going to be interesting to see what these ducks do. You know, like if they cross flyways, these mallards that are up in Ontario right now, like if, if we see any of them that come to the central fly, it's all going to be super interesting to just to see like if they stay in, in the Atlantic flyway, if any of them shift, if they go back there the next right. year, like 100%. you said, that this it's going to be, it's going to be fun. It, it's fascinating, and it gives everyone kind of a glimpse into the world that, that a lot of these scientists and, and state, you know, DNRs are doing. Um, you know, our premise is that we're making it more open source, and, and we do charge a very small, you know, membership fee. It's sixty bucks a year to follow this to help offset the cost of the whole thing. Um, but it, it, the point is for everyone get to see it, for everyone to see how cool it is, um, because it is, and we're the only folks that are doing it, you know, at the scale. So, you know, I don't because where they go your guess is as good as mine tomorrow and when they leave and it you know gets everybody talking about it i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna pitch this to uh my kid's science teacher i'm on school board so i'll, I'll you know i'll i'll, I'll use my way oh wow. i'll use my way that's terrible it's a free thing i was for them. mayor for 10 years i never done something like this it's you should be ashamed of yourself he's, he said it's a, he's, he it's, said free. it's free i'm he's giving, giving away, away to these yeah. kids Andy's so, starting you know, to sound like a democratic politician over here now you know i'm gonna, I'm gonna sway the voters here i'm gonna twist their arm I think a little it's bit a good thing i think all schools should do it um, there's no reason you no, shouldn't do it especially um, if you're going to give away a no you can teach kids about geography science biology the whole thing you're get your cross it's a great thing yeah and by god from being around people <laughs> that, that were raised in knox city my wife geography is not her strong point so it would be really good for her on geography well i didn't know where jacksonville was so it, well there you go so <laughs> well, there you go but the ducks wouldn't help you there but it, it is neat just to see distances from places, you know, like I wouldn't have known that Ontario, Kingsville, Ontario is about 300 miles from Buffalo, right? I would have had no concept of how far that was. And you have no concept of how far it is from 
Mexico City to North Dakota, stuff like that. But once you start getting, you start looking at the stats and you see where the birds go. Um, I mean, I've learned a lot about it. I'm not embarrassed to say how little I knew about it until we started doing it. So that one's my problem deep. is I think I'm going to get attach- attached to these little bastards. You know what I mean? Like, ah, oh, shit. Richard, Richard left us no, today. It, it, we, it, it, and that's why for our younger classes, we do have a few, you know, on standby so that they don't have to go, you don't have to broach the subject of death with a second grade class. Um, but that is just the reality of it is that some of them are going to die. We will do some spring banding as well so that you can get a good bit. Um, and that'll be neat to see the birds in, you know, in Kingsville in the spring. You know, like if they're going to the prairie potholes, where they're going, if they're different birds than are there now. Um, and, you know, Jack Miner's got 100 years of band returns, but, uh, you know, they had a goose killed in California. Wow. A bunch of birds killed in Texas, right? Um, a bunch being. We've never killed one. That's a percentage, but. We have, we've, that's a, that's a, that would be a huge trophy. I only know one person has got here, and it's that little midget, Justin Hill, but he's killed every kind of weird band in the world, so. I think he's. You bet he might have bought it. <laughs> I've found out recently there are a bunch of people buying no, bands Justin, on eBay. Justin's not understand. that kind of guy. He wouldn't buy one, but that's just the way he is. He's the only person I know out here that's killed a. Well, he didn't kill it here, but he killed a banded whistling tree duck. So, anyways, he's 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 doing pretty good for himself. Little bastard. Some people have all the luck with that, and all these ducks have uh, Jack Minor bands on them. Yeah. Well, they shockingly they do nope. not. Um, the law in Canada is you can only put two markers on a duck. So they have a backpack which is marker one, and they have a federal leg mm-hmm. band which is marker two. So they don't have a because this you know third marker would be too heavy on the other leg of course it would be why so, do, uh, well but why, yeah you put what, two why is the survival rate so low on band and i understand the neck collar birds a lot of them don't survive but why just leg bands do there's so many of them not make it very long is it because people touch them or do they go to shock or what's what's the deal there i'm not sure i I'm not okay. sure i follow do, when they when they net collar birds, a lot of those birds don't survive very long. Is that is that false or is that true? I've never heard this. I have heard. I mean, you're, I, making, you're talking about the, the geese. geese when they net when All they right, put so the transmitters. They had the problems initially where those net collars they were doing were holding moisture and they would okay. freeze and it would kill the birds okay. that way. They fixed okay. that, uh, but yeah, that was killing them. That was killing the shit out of birds. Um, but they fixed that. And that was a. a they, everyone realized what was going on there, and they quickly because it would just hold moisture, and then ice would form on it, and that okay. would kill the bird. That, that, so that's what the problem not, was. No longer just the thing. banding on the legs and stuff don't affect nothing at all. Then no. Okay. Put me uh, on record, other than no. just being an easy target. Yeah, I mean, I you know you band hunters. You know, I guess if you're looking for bands on legs, um, yeah, you can't see the backpacks though when they fly. You can't see them. What? You can see the band a lot better than you can see the every, backpack. Every time I go by, and I did it last week, every time I'd see a bunch of geese somewhere, I'm looking at the legs. Driving down the road, looking at legs. Every, that's is. right. That's it's a waterfowl yeah, hunter. I mean, if you're you're not something's wrong with you if you're not. Yeah, and I'm, 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 I'm not going to sit there and shoot one with a 22. I know some people do that, which I disagree with strongly, but I do like to see them and just go. That one's banded. I mean, we all do that. Mm-hmm. We were uh, when we went and hunted with St. Lawrence uh, St. Lawrence Outfitters. In Ontario, we were mm-hmm. going to go fishing, and we, we were launching from a, a little park. There were more yeah. geese there that were banded than geese that did not have bands. It was I've never seen that before in my life. I was in, I was in heaven. It was just fun watching them walking around and like, oh, shit, that one's banded. That one's banded. That one's banded. Well, those local geese up there around Jack Minor, I mean, you know, they're your, your park geese. Like, every one of them is banded. Mm-hmm. So it's funny to see those. And it's funny at Jack Minor because I was sitting there looking at them and you had a group of geese on the right side of the road and a group of geese on the left side of the road. And I said, what's going on here, Joe? And Joe Vermeulen's there, you know, head of their master bander and their head of grounds up there. He said, well, these geese over here, they're local geese and you can feed those geese out of your hand. He said, those geese over there are migratory geese and they won't let you get within a hundred yards. So. Oh, really? See, that's, that's interesting because uh, where we hunt in Oklahoma, where we used to hunt in Oklahoma, they'd all, roost in the town park they'd roost there and mm-hmm. then they'd go out into the field and they feed and then they go back to the roost but like if they were at the park you could walk up to them <laughs> feed them but if they roosted mm-hmm. on like a stock tank or whatever you couldn't even drive by them without them blowing up and it's like it's the same geese yeah. you just roosted at a different spot that day so it's crazy how they know where they're safe and where they're not safe 
they get smart quick, and if they don't, they die. Right. Um, I mean, you know, it's like birds that have not been messed with, how easy they are to decoy versus birds that have been shot out the whole way down. Like, they, they know what's going on. you got to be good to get those to come in. Yeah, but these geese, they, they figured it out. Like, they could roost on the park. You're fine, like you said, feeding them bread. But if they ever went and roosted outside of the city limits, like, good luck, because they're going to bust whenever, whenever they see it, the vehicle. It, 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 here's your fun fact of the day. This is what Jack Miner taught me up there, is that feeding bread to ducks and geese is really bad for them. Is it? sugars mm, really really bad for them they don't process it very well it's too gosh we're gonna get over my head real quick but i think there are too many carbs in it mm-hmm. it makes their wings grow too quickly when they're young and that's what forms angel wing which is where the wing looks kind of gimpy and they can't fly so if they're ducklings or goslings and you feed them bread is not good for them if they eat a lot of bread because they won't be able to fly wonder what you should feed them instead did he say Corn. Leave them alone and let them nature take care of themselves. <laughs> That's what he wanted to say, but he's probably being polite. Yeah, but you know. No, I mean, I you know at Jack Miner they have they've seed. They have a bunch of different stuff that they give kids that you can feed them out of your hand there. But they got do not feed the ducks. Damn, I wish I would have that place. everywhere. You don't have a passport. I, well, I'll have it next month. Next time I go up that way, you need I'm going to get there. one. Oh, I have one get all one the time. Just, with open invitation. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm going back. Probably end of November. Well, I can't do nothing until after hunting season. We're too we're busy till that was my last days to do anything till February. But uh, next time I go up north, I'm going to go there, and whether it be yep. next, I'm wanting to. We're going to take the grandkids back to Michigan in the next year or two, and that's where we'll go. We'll make a day of that. That would be a fun trip. I think the grandkids would love that. I can't wait to get grilled going into Canada again. Well, that's, you you grill last time you go oh. every. <laughs> time well that's because Andy was kicked out of the country once i was kicked out of the country one time trying to guide without a license i broke the law i understand right but every time they pull me out of the vehicle we went to uh where were we last year oh we went we went across to see niagara from the canada side uh-huh. which spoiler alert niagara from the canada side looks identical to niagara on the american side no it doesn't either so save yourself the trouble don't go stay you know buy local and they pulled me and my family out. It's they didn't in, pull your family out. Fuck they if pulled, they didn't. Well, but it was because of you. We all had to go inside. Well, I thought Andy was a drug trafficker. Well, it's in July. <laughs> like, you know, we're just going to go see Niagara. Going to go to this shitty all amusement right. park you got. And we got held up for about 15 minutes. They, I think they fucking, they asked me where my guns were. Well, they're in Texas. Right. You know, where do you keep your guns? In Texas. Where do you keep your guns in Texas? In the house. So, like, we had to go through this whole thing, so. But. And it's funny you say that. Well, Andy got, Andy got booted out of the country. I true, just said true that. Story. I know, but, but that's why. But when we went back to film a hunt there this year, or we didn't film a hunt, we just happened to be there, they, uh, they questioned us pretty hard again, but at the airport, it wasn't that bad, was it? Yes, I got pulled. I got, I got to go to the, the. Special guy. <laughs> the special guy. Uh, enhanced interrogation. But Andy does. Every time Secondary we go, training. they pull his ass every freaking time. Yeah. Well, he's a basically convicted, convicted felon. Yeah, I mean, there. he is. Pretty much. I'm marked for life. Now, if it was opposite and he was coming to America illegally, they'd give him a check for $2,500 every month. So we need to figure out how to do that shit. What is it like for you going up there? Because, I mean, well, it's, te- funny. Te- it's funny you say that. Sometimes it's when you, so the way I did this time is I drove up there. And so you drive to Detroit, you cross over the Ambassador Bridge, and it's a short drive from there. And when I went in, so I went in, came back for my grandmother's birthday, and then went back, right? So I crossed it, you know, four times, twice right. into Canada. The first time I went, it was right after a Lions game. And it was late at night because I've been driving all day, and I got there about 11, 12 o'clock at night. And I sat on the bridge for two hours trying to get wow. to Oof. border crossing because there are only a couple of the gates open, you know, and there was a bunch of traffic. And we got there and, a, you know, border patrol person knocked on my window and I just put a bunch of sunflower seeds in my mouth. So I'm talking like that, which was my first mistake. And the lady, you know, asked me, she said, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm going to Jack Marner, so, <laughs> you know, and there were just a lot of questions that. I didn't answer super well. It's like, what are you doing there? I'm like, oh, I'm going to ban-, ban birds, which first mistake was I was being too honest. Yeah. So I got pulled over and she said, okay. And then she put a little slip under my, you know, windshield wipers. And I went, that can't be good. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was still like 20 minutes later until I got to the lady, you know, I handed the passport to and she said, oh, you got tagged, huh? <laughs> I went, that, 
is that good or bad? And she went, it's not good. (laughs) Makes you feel good. (laughs) She said, she said, what are you doing? I was like, well, I'm going to Jack Minor. It's a bird banding sanctuary. Is and and they, I it was like I was speaking a completely different language. Yeah. So I got pulled over in secondary screening. Um, they turned, they searched the car. They searched it to an extent where they took the floorboards out of it. They opened all my luggage. They went through my clothes. Wow. Yep. And the the tailgate on the truck backed into the fence pretty hard, so it's kind of wonky. And on the inside, it's open. Like it, the panel has come off. Mm-hmm. It's like, what you got inside those panels? Oh, shit. Like, You're uh, nothing. You're welcome to look. And so then they sent me inside. And it was at this point, it's midnight, one in the morning. And they said, well, do you know anyone? Can we call someone at Jack Minor to verify you're coming? And I'm like, well, I have these text messages. I'm like, well, I'm going to call this guy. Like, it's one in the morning. I doubt he answers. But eventually that guy was cool. And, it, you know, I sat there for a while and he let me go. And, my only complaint was when I went to put my luggage, get my luggage out of the car when I eventually got to the hotel was they didn't zip it back up and everything fell on the ground <laughs> at two in the morning. <laughs> but then the next time I went, it was, and the next time I went, I thought it was going to be a bigger trouble because we had researchers from Boise State and then um, one of our researchers with a French passport. And I thought this is going to be just a complete nightmare going through here. And that guy handed them a French passport, spoke French with them because they speak, yep. you know, that's one of their national languages. And they basically welcomed us <laughs> into the country. And I was like, damn. <laughs> Got to go with know, these so French guys. If you want to go to Canada, get a French passport. Yeah. In and out. No problem. Well, what, honestly, what the fuck is anybody, why does an American want to go to Canada to live? I mean, I mean, ser- I mean, I don't understand what the benefits are that these Canadians think it's such a great place that we want to go there outside of waterfowl hunting. Maybe they're trying to keep us out. Do you ever think of that? Make it such a hassle to where these assholes don't want to come up here. And- you go to Canada just like I have. You've been to big cities. Have you seen any fucking Canadians? They're all Indian and Somalian and everything else. So obviously someone's going over there, but it ain't Americans. I, I honestly don't understand what Canada's trying to keep Americans from coming over there for. We want to go over there to hunt. Or to fish. It's a great place to hunt and fish. And the people that are native it. Canadians I, are the greatest, nicest people in the world. They're just like we are. Right. But I've been to I've been to a lot of the big cities. Vancouver, you know, everywhere. I haven't been in Montreal City Limits, but the, I don't, there's nothing there that I want. I don't want to go to New I've York City either. To, I've never been to any of the big cities up there, but, you know, I would argue that there aren't many big cities in America that I really want to spend no, a ton of time with that, either. So, I, you know, that's... Yeah here and there but the kingsville kingsville you know small town pretty close to detroit but small town it's a farming town like i could live there yeah on the lake super nice yeah the small towns are great but you're right i can't think of one big city in america i'd want to live in i used to say oklahoma city because it don't have a lot of crime and it's and it's it's a big city i would rather live somewhere up north in a big city but i don't there's not a big city anywhere in the united states i want to live in either but you ready to get fired up? I'll tell you something I learned about Canada. Mm. This is gonna fire you up. Okay. I don't even know if I should tell you. <laughs> I went up, I went up there and we did the uh we banded the first couple. We had the board, Jack Minor board came. They brought, you know, the lo- local news station came and filmed it. And we were eating fried chicken, having lunch after, and I was just talking to everybody. And one of the guys is a uh rep for Weatherby. And uh so I was talking to him, he's Canadian, and, and I asked him, you know, how gun sales were, and I was asking him what it's like to buy a gun in Canada. Um, and he said, buying a shotgun's not super hard. You have to take a, you know, hundred ed class and then you just go in and buy it like in America and that's it. And I was like, okay, well, what about buying a, a handgun? And he said, you cannot, you can't do it. Anymore. Right. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, you cannot buy a handgun. And he said, if you have a handgun, cause he has a couple pistols, right? He said, they die with you. You've been grandfathered in, you can keep your handgun. You cannot sell it. And you cannot pass it down. So when he dies, the government gets his guns back. Ooh. His handguns. Well, that don't that don't piss me off because it's Canada. I don't give two shits. No more than what goes on in <laughs> Afghanistan. But I mean, it doesn't surprise me. I knew that you can't have a pistol there. I don't even know about a long rifle either. What do you mean? A, a, a rifle. Sure, you can have you a can. shot like a big rifle. A shotgun like a 270 you can have. I think they have but not like a three hundred eight for I, deer hunting or I, anything. I think they're I think they're in the same boat. And, and somebody from Canada, Rory White, or somebody's going to call and and correct me. And that's fine. I, I would like to know the rule, but I th- I think the same is on the long rifles, or that's coming. And you know what's sad is Canada. When you get to them small towns, those people are no different than we are in our Midwest towns. They're exactly the same. 
But when you go to a big city in Canada, you don't see anybody that's Canadian hardly anymore at all. It's all an influx of uh, Europe and all them other places. Ordinary hunting rifles and shotguns are permitted in Canada. And so, so long rifles are the same then. Okay. I didn't, I thought that I know, but I knew you couldn't have a pistol. Handguns are considered restricted firearms in Canada. A restricted firearm may be bought, may be brought into Canada, but under authorized to transport permits must be attained in advance. Non-restricted firearms, including most ordinary hunting rifles and shotguns are okay. I got, I got nervous cause I keep a pistol in the glove box yeah. you know, almost always. And when I got in the car to drive, I was out the driveway and I thought I need to take that pistol yeah. out. And I asked that guy, I said, because, again, my car got searched. I was detained at, you know, a border. And I asked him, I said, what would have happened if I had forgotten to take a pistol out? And he said, well, they would have kept the pistol, and then it would have depended on if they believed you or not. And if they believed you, they would have, you know, written you up or whatever and let you go. If they didn't believe you, they either would have, they certainly would have sent you back, or they might have detained you. Ooh, so, you might have a husband. Have you might have a husband right now in the Canadian prison. Would you have, I'm assuming you would, the confiscation would have meant they, you're not getting that gun back? No. <laughs> no. Once you're in Canada with the pistol, you can't say, I'll, I'll turn around and leave. It's, Too late. It's their gun. Well, I had heard, um, <clears throat> so I was told. A long time ago, we, you know, we used to have a lot of guides. They'd work in Canada and then they'd come down here. But I used to hear horror stories like, they found a stray rifle bullet, you know, underneath a seat or whatever. And that was grounds to yep. get turned around and, you know, you know, just anything you're hunting out of the truck and a stray rifle yep. fell out, a rifle bullet fell, fell out and they didn't know it or forgot about it or whatever. And turned them around. I've never had to go through the, uh, go getting a check in Canada where they go oh, through all their process, stuff. Jeff. Well, but we've never had a vehicle gone through. I've, I, when I'm with you, we've never had a vehicle come through. We come from hunting up there one time, and we were told we had to take all the grass off the blinds. Yeah, that was that was bullshit. I got to pee. And so we took all our grass off the blinds, and they didn't even they did. Right. If I could start talking to the guys, the Canadian guys, well, we didn't even get checked in Canada. We come through to the U.S. side, and the U.S. guys there, we said, you can't bring grass. So we took all of them off. And we pulled up, and I started right. bullshitting the guys, and uh, Obama was still in office. And he's like, well, welcome back to America. I said, fucking Obama's still in office? He goes, yep. I said, well, shit, I think we may turn around. He started laughing with me. They fucking checked mm -hmm. our shit and told us to hit the road. They were happy as hell. They were regular. You know, they had a sense of humor and stuff, didn't do nothing. So we'd taken all the right. grass off. But I came back from Mexico one time, and I had a freaking clip. I don't even know if you're allowed to call it a clip. I don't know what the hell it holds on my – for a 9 millimeter. I had 17 uh -huh. rounds in it or whatever it is, my nine, and I had I had a couple of them, and I stuck one in my damn bag, and I forgot about it, and I got, yeah. I went through the fucking airport and everything with that thing. No, no one said anything. They didn't catch it. I threw the damn thing away mm -hmm. in Mexico. Man, that's crazy. I, uh, I we had a similar situation. Well, I say similar. We went to Argentina a couple of years back, and I had a my younger cousin. He's probably 15. At the time, but he wanted to bring one of the ducks back from Argentina, and he he wrapped it up in his waders and put it in his bag to fly back to America Ooh. with it. And you have never seen such a problem. And of course, I mean you can't. Well, the main thing they put is animals, livestock, you know, stuff like that. It's on all the signs, and here he's got a duck in his waders. So that was quite the headache. <laughs> I've never done that. Michelle, I always scare her because she's a snack queen. She believes she, if we go somewhere, she takes snacks and she like in the morning, she'll yeah. have crackers and stuff in the room. So she always takes snacks. So every time we go to Mexico, she takes snacks and put it in the, the luggage. So we're coming through and it says no food, blah, blah, blah. And I said, they're not worried about us. We go, we go through all the time. Luckily we've never been checked, but she always brings snacks. Right. I really don't think they're going to say nothing anyways. They're sealed up crackers and cookies and stuff. But uh, yeah, they get the, what they, uh, they can put you in jail for that shit. Well, he narrowly avoided jail, but I will say you should not try and bring a duck back from Argentina in your yeah, waters. It's a bad idea. Imagine what, what, what's, what's he in prison for? Oh, he tried to snuggle a t uh, smuggle a teal in. I mean, that's that's crazy, but that's how they do shit sometimes. Illegal importation. You got to slip that guy a hundred dollar oh, bill right. and uh, give him a U.S. one hundred dollar bill, and he'll let you go. Man, it's, I mean, well, and part of the problem too, not problem, but I mean, you know, there's a language barrier and this is a very odd, you don't see that every day, but I've, you know, when we, uh, when we spend a lot of time in Mexico, when I'm down there with those fellas trying to do some of this banding work, I run into some, some real 
language barrier issues. Last year, I don't know if I told you this, when we went, we were in La Paz in Baja, California last year. And uh, we rent, I flew in, rent a car, we're off the beaten path. I had no idea where we are. We're on a dirt road off of a side road, off of a main highway, right? And we're working, and I got the keys in the breast pocket of the waiters. I got my phone in there too, like an idiot. And I take my phone out to take a picture or something, and the keys fall out. And so I didn't know they fell out, too, until I got back to the car and it didn't unlock. So I had to call a tow truck, in, and the guy I was working with was pretty irritated with me, who's, you know, in fairness. And he speaks Spanish. He's like, deal with it. And so I had to communicate with a tow, dri- tow, tow, tow truck driver where I was in a language I do not speak, using a language that he hardly spoke. And that was a good learning. It was a good object lesson for me. I won't ever drop rental car keys in a marsh again. <laughs> Shit. Um, they have an app. You should have got you should have got the app. You can like translate it back and forth. We uh but it makes you I wish you'd been there. You could it help makes me out. wonder though, like that French guy, he could have screwed them big time in French. Oh yeah, I'm good. These assholes over here, you better watch their shit. They got cocaine in their sock. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's a buddy. Um, I'm trying to think. It was Nick Costas. He had a guy, and I can't remember where he was. He was from Argentina. So Dive Bomb was coming out here to hunt like four or five years ago, and they had... Uh, a, I remember that guy. They had a gentleman working for him, Nick Costas. He has an outfitter in Canada now. You to own Split Read. And... Um, I follow him on Instagram. He's got a bunch of good stuff they on were, there. He had to pick up a guy from, from Argentina to come out here and hunt with us. Well, Argentina mm-hmm. doesn't speak English. Nick doesn't speak... Uh, Portuguese is it Portuguese <laughs> I think so Spanish, Spanish. is it Spanish um, Spanish. so like he has got this guy for two hours in his car and so he downloaded an app and he would speak into it and then the phone would would speak to the guy he'd speak to the guy the guy would speak into the phone and then the phone would speak to Nick and they did that for for two hours two hours back, back and forth till they got out here there you go. but yeah you just gotta you gotta figure it out on the fly um, whenever you told him you were going to, uh, uh, Jack minor did like the red flags go off in their head. Do they think you were working with them? There was a lot of questions about if I was getting paid. Yep. Cause I guess I would have had to have, um, He's, and I'm not, I'm not paid by Jack right. minor for any Canadian border patrols listening. I am not right. paid by Jack minor sanctuary. Um, and so there was a lot of questions about that. Yes. A lot of questions about if I was working up there. Yeah, that's their that's their big sticking point, <clears throat> and I could just um, which is I mean it's a tough question to answer because I mean I'm like I am, but I'm not. I mean I'm not getting paid to be up there, right. but we are putting these trackers on. So no, I'm not. Yeah. Eh, fuck them. You know what I mean? Go hassle. Go ha- next go time. Hassle next time I go, I'm just gonna tell them I'm going to the casino. There's a casino right there. I'm just I'm going to the casino. That's what yeah, I. Yeah, they'll, they'll take your money. And I'm sure when they saw that that, that, that panel was off that tailgate, they were like, God, <laughs> drugs, bring the dog. Man, if that's how bad I was at smuggling drugs, <laughs> if I had an open panel on my tailgate and that's where I put them, like I would deserve to go to jail if that was my big plan. Yeah. So what are you most excited about doing next? You said you're, you know, you're, you're going to be in all four flyaways. Is there like a specific place that you're like, yes, you got that, you got that circled on your calendar? Like I'm super stoked to, to get out there. I'll be super honest with you. I mean, it took, it was an idea and then it was a dream. And, um, you know, it took two years to, to, to ban birds in Canada, um, from permitting, uh, from learning the whole process from a lot of trial and error. Um, so getting these trackers on with Jack minor is incredibly rewarding. You know, it's, it's kind of the start of this thing. We banned some birds last year in Mexico. Um, uh, you know, with Manuel Grosselet, who who runs Tierra Davis down there, um, Mike Krzywicki, another researcher down there, we're going to work with. Um, but but I hope what we're able to do with Jack Minor one is raise them some money, two is is get this thing to pay for itself um, and, and make a lot of good with kids. I said we want to get this in front of five thousand kids in five years in five thousand classrooms. Um, you know, where we're able to ban in the future, I don't know. Um, we'll get pintails. I want to ban some pintails super bad. So that will be this spring when we do that down in Sinaloa, that'll be super rewarding. That'll be kind of another chapter checked off. Um, and then, you know, I hope that once it gets going and, and, and we're doing what we say we're doing, and this is you know, from a good place, you know, like this is for a good thing. Um, I hope that more of these researchers will be willing to, to join us. Um, and we'll be able to really 
kind of blow this up with a lot more ducks in a lot more places. Yeah. Um, but I want to ban some birds in the prairie potholes. I will do that. That I, I want to do that. I think those would be maybe the most fascinating birds. I want to ban a snow goose. Um, I want to strap a camera a camera to a, a goose's chest uh, and live stream that. That's a little ways that away, but um, not as far as you think. Um, my guy Manuel, he says that that's not far away at all. So um, I, there's a lot I'm excited about, and I don't know where it's going to take me. And, and you know, I'm still on the fence as if it can be a, a full time career long term. Uh, but I fully believe in it and I hope so. So just, you know, every day is a blessing I get to do it. So, you know, I'm just excited to see what comes out. Have you ever seen that Nat Geo film? And I I don't remember which one it is. It's, it's on Amazon or Netflix and the guys, they put cameras on the gray lag geese and they show them in Europe and they show them flying and the migration and it, and they, they, and they land in these little villages, like in a farmer's lot and he's got feed outside of his house. And then, it shows them landing some decoys and they get shot and one of the other ones gets shot and stuff. It's really a neat, neat deal, but it shows the goose and everything. Such a cool view of it, but it's a camera on one of them. <clears throat> and that's what that they're they're right there on being able to do it on, at an affordable scale where you can live stream it. Like imagine how fun it would be to go to the fifty duck site. We got a bunch of cool stuff, but if the first thing you saw is a true live stream of a goose flying somewhere or being fed bread out of his hand. Think of how attached you'd get to that thing when it got mm-hmm. shot, if it got shot. That you'd would be, be like trying to talk to I, it. I, I, you'd be like trying to talk to it. No, them bastards are hiding in that grass right there. Don't land there. Man, it would it, it would be tough if you saw an A frame oh, and the goose was yeah. circling. But this video shows that. It shows the goose next to him crumple up and die. I'll tell you what, uh, yeah, that would that would that would hurt my heart. It's a, it, I'll tell you an unintended consequence of what this is this has done for me, which whether it's good or bad, I don't know. But you know, like I've grown up duck hunting and, and going to a lot of places to duck hunt, and, and it's it's starting to get tough for me to shoot a duck because I'm holding them so much and I'm on this pursuit to catch a you know a pintail and put a tracker on it. I'm putting these trackers on the mallards. Like I know how I feel when someone kills one of our track birds, and uh, I'm not saying I don't like to do it. I'm saying there is like that pendulum starting to swing maybe a little too much that way. You're getting older too, because I have that in me now because I've, I don't, I don't care about killing much stuff. Uh, I got to helicopter mm-hmm. hog hunt the other day and, um, I made sure every pig that I shot, and I didn't shoot a lot of them, but I made sure they were dead. I didn't want to say, I don't like to see nothing suffer now. And I just, I look at things different right. as I've gotten older. And I think that's just a level you go through in age. When you're young, you want to shoot everything. And then you, then you want to hunt everything. And then it becomes a trophy hunt, basically. And then you get where you just rather right. see in animals. And uh, my, my nephew right. told me the other day that uh, my brother-in-law is getting that way. He would rather just look at deer than shoot them. And he used to love to shoot everything. You just, I think it's, I think right. it's an age deal. You respect life. Life is precious, and we don't, we don't realize it as much until we. And not everybody young doesn't. But as you get older, you know your days are less and less. And you appreciate life more. And I, and I think that's a lot to do with it is the age thing. And that's what's amazing to me when I find an older guy like Pat Pitt. Pat likes to shoot the shit out of ducks still. He loves it. It's his passion. And and my dad was right. that way. My dad never got to that point where he just wanted to see shit. So some people are different, you know. <laughs> yeah. they want, I, but, and there's nothing, no, wrong, there's nothing not, wrong with that not, at all. Nothing I mean, at I'm, all. Uh, but, yeah, you know, and it's just it's the progression. I I think it call it. They talked about that on the standard sportsman. I don't know if you heard that. They talked about the five stages of a hunter, and that's exactly what their whole podcast was about. About how when you're young, like everyone's a bloodthirsty killer just because you're a kid, and that's what's fun is pulling the trigger. And then you kind of mature, and then you know I think the last phase was you you just like to take other people to get them to experience yep. it. Um, so. And it's it's and it's true, and, and you need people in all of those phases to to perpetuate the sport and to you know enhance the resource. We gotta get more people into it. the first phase is part of the things we need. Someone we need more people to get to that first phase. See, I and then graduate. I've them. only guided, so like my I think I started out in the second phase. You know what I mean? Like I mean, mm-hmm. I've only done this professionally. Like there's there's not right. many times that I've gone out and it was just me on a personal hunt and me pulling the trigger. So it's like, I started out on, on the second phase of, I got to do this for other people. But, right. um, and I mean, you know, there, there's, there's different pressure. You know, 
basically once once you call the shot, like it's out of your hands. You've done everything you could, whether that is getting the bird to fifty yards, and you know that that's the best you're going to get, and you got to get you got to right. put some birds on the ground, or you know the ultimate goal is to decoy them all the way. But um, I've started out in the second phase, but now. So it's, it's kind of natural for me to uh, take my boys out because like that, that's all right. I've ever done. I've, I've only taken people out. So now right. I've got a nine-year-old and a six-year-old and the nine-year-old really, really, he's starting to really enjoy hunting. I've taken him out on a couple dove hunts this year and a lot right. of those light bulbs are starting to turn on in him. He's, in that, ki- that. he's in that killer instinct. He's in that killer. <laughs> he's in that killing stage. He's in that, hey. And it's fun for you to watch yeah. that. Like you're super into him just having fun. Yeah whatever that means for him. Mm-hmm. And so you'll do what you can for him to do it. And that's great because he's on the path of being a lifelong conservationist. Yeah. yeah but it's always funny because we'll see that bird fly over at 75 and he's like, I think I can get it. It's like, no, <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> no. We're gonna, we're, you're you're going to learn your limits here, kid. That's a 20 gauge. But, uh, he, you know, we, we shoot boss out here and, uh, we, he's got, he's got a little 20 gauge Mossberg and I think he was shooting like sevens or eights or nines from boss. And I mean, just, he smoked a couple dove and, you know, more and more confidence yeah. is starting to get built up in him. And with that confidence, you know, that 75 yard shot, he's like, I think I can get that dad. It's like, no, no, we're, you gotta, you gotta learn your limits here, bub. Shoot or shoot, shoot, or shoot man. There's a hundred percent of the doves. You don't he's shoot. Gonna, at. He's going to, he's not afraid to take that shot, but, um, well, he, why would he be? He's not paying for the shells yeah, either. Exactly. He he's, he, we, <laughs> we call my wife and I, we call the kids, uh, they're our broke friends. We got to pay for everything that they fucking do. <laughs> There, there are broke buddies we can't get rid of. Got to pay for every That's dinner, funny. shotgun shells, hunting license, everything. It's all. Yeah. God, and those, are, those are just your kids that are bro- your broke friends, right? Yeah, yeah, they're okay. broke friends. Yeah. So tell me about this. I saw on y'all's Instagram that y'all have an interactive map that's about to that's about to come up. Yeah, man. If you go to, so the next the next phase of this map is just press play. Mm-hmm. Right. And then just watch an animation of birds moving. Right. So if you go to the home page of our website, you can see the first phase of that on a limited scale. We did it with some tundra swans. Um, let me know when you're at the home page. Uh, see Starlink's not Starlinkin. I might have to. Uh, let me see here. Elon's a busy man right now. He is. He's busy landing rockets right now, and I've got the little spinning wheel. So let me just start from scratch here. So what we want to do is is where every bird on our map, I want to be able to hit play, and you can watch all 1,350 of those birds move. And that way, you know, it can be an inter- interactive, and you can zoom in, and you can do all the stuff you can do now. But you can also just sit back and, you know, just see it visualized, which will help people better understand the flyways and where birds are coming this and the other. And so that's the next big step we have. Um, and like on our homepage right now, we've got a little teaser for what it'll look like on some scales. So okay. I'm on the that. homepage. Yeah. Just scroll to the top and you'll see that what looks like a map. You'll see all those birds fly from Alaska to the outer banks, to California, everywhere in between. Okay. Where, where do I go? Hold on a second. I'm at the, I'm at the top. Just the, Home page, scroll to the top. Okay. Just I think I'm there. Oh, I see. I see the fifty it. ducks tracker is what I'm seeing. Mm. Oh, I don't on. think hold you're on, on the right. Page. I don't think I'm on the right thing. There we go. Okay. Hit 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 yep. that icon top left. Yep, I right. see it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that's that's so on a limited next scale. Like, I want the, all the birds to be like that. Well, that'd be badass. And then you'll be able. Would you be able to like customize that to whatever you're wanting to see? Because like like you said, right now it's all tundra swans. For sure. For sure. If you go to right now, if you go to our in that tab at the top, it says resources. Yep. If you hover over it, you go to waterfowl center. Mm-hmm. You click on that. That'll bring you to, which is a good. This is a good thing for kids too. Like it has all these species: American woods, cimetail, greater white front goose, right? Got all that jazz. If you click on blue wing tail, it'll give you a little write up of the bird. And this one's got its animated map up there, so it's got the move tracks of a bunch of blue wing teal. So if you come to this page in 30 days, you'll be able to see it on a species by species and watch this animated movement go. So we'll have them all in here on this 
resources page at the waterfowl um, waterfowl center, and then eventually we'll get it onto our main map, the duck map page, where you can just hit play on that map and watch them all. That's badass. So it started in what April? Is that when it's is that for the blue? No, January, January. Well, you don't really see a bunch of blue winged teal moving until about April, going north. Yeah, a bunch of them did not live for you know a whole yeah. year, and so you just get a little bit of move tracks here and there. But um, and we'll build animations like this out for like our Jack Minor birds. It'll be super fun to see stuff like that. Um, you know, we're just getting this thing rolling. So, so where it goes with it, you know, we're, we got some good guys in place who are super good at running the computer and, and it'll get better and better. We just, uh, we started working with Spartan Forge as well. Um, and they're going to help us do some really cool stuff with some of this data as well. And, and our, and our, our folks at, uh, the University of Windsor, um, those academics, those graduate students can do stuff on the computer that just will and blow your mind because I like to think that I'm okay at it and then they'll send me some stuff and I'll just go you know whoa so I'm excited to see all the stuff that we can get out of this and I'm assuming like dot to dot is where it pinged once and then pinged again so you can kind of get a get a yeah. gauge on how far it went in a day or from ping yeah. to ping I guess because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. some of these like it left Louisiana and next time it pinged was Kansas I'd, that'd be interesting to know if that was in a day yeah, and if you go to the map, and then it just kind of leads you on a you know a journey on the website. Then you go to the map, you can click on the blue wing teal, and then you can hover over each of the data points, and it'll tell you what time it was, when it was, and you can get more into it that way. So it's just another way to, to, to kind of show you this data, to present this data to you in a way that, that you will find useful and interesting. Yeah. What uh, – let me see if speckle bellies – Let's look at specs because we got specs moving today. We don't have uh, we don't have their animated map up. We're we're doing that now. I was reading an email with uh, one of my guys before we got on this call who was starting to build them out. I think he built. Um, let me see. I might have it on my computer. I don't know if I can share the screen with you or not. Mm, but probably not. With the way El with the I, way Elon do we do we have any widgeon? Not with the animated map, but the only ones we've got with the animated map right now are the Tundra Swans and, and the Blue Wing Teal, but in the next 30 days, we'll get them all oh, done. I got you. Well, that'll be fun to look at in the yep. next 30 days. So, just a little teaser yeah, for there you. you go. Um, I guess with Widgeon, you'd have to go to the Pacific Northwest to do a banding project? I don't so. think, I don't know where else they would be. Are there any banding projects in America to where you wouldn't have to go through the hassle of like getting paperwork and shit done? Well, that's what I was talking about earlier about hoping that once we prove we're doing a good thing here and that we can be, you know, a secondary use for data. Because um, you can still, I mean, like all the scientific projects that are scientific research projects that are being done with this, I can repurpose your data to whatever ever level you want to share it, right? And we can do something with it on our site. Um, and I'm hoping what we do with Jack Miner kind of opens that door for us to work with some of these state agencies who are already banning these birds. Um you know, because it's pretty expensive. It, I mean, it's, it's a super expensive deal to put these trackers on. And so the reality of the situation is we'll never ban, you know, a thousand in a year. We'll never ban 500 right. in a year. Um, but but the state and, and the feds are banding, they are banding, you know, a thousand a year. And so if you could just get some of their birds from everywhere because they believe in what you're doing here, um, you know, that would be a way that overnight, the, you know, that would make it a lot easier. <laughs> but, but, it's super hard to do that because the you know for all sorts of reasons. So right now, you had said on the last one. I can't remember if we talked about it or not on air. Each each uh, backpack unit, what twelve hundred bucks, fifteen hundred bucks, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So bucks. if you gooseneck collars are a little more expensive, but twelve hundred bucks. But if you shoot one, you'll send them a replica, right? Is that it? well? So if you shoot one, it's the same deal. It's got a band on it. Call in your band. Uh, and then it's got a, on the side, my phone number is laser etched on it. So you call the number. I'm super excited for you. You've killed a once in a lifetime bird. That is not lost on me at all. But I will send you an exact replica that just does not have the hardware inside of it. Um, and more times than not, we can reuse the tracker. Right. Um, could, is there a way that they could mount the bird with the tracker on it? Like whenever they get the replica? I'm assuming they could just put pop, yeah, pop it sure. right back on there, and then I mean, yeah. you're not. You put it, put it right back on. Yeah, I mean, so you're not losing anything. 
as far as a tracker. You know, if lose. you want to mount the bird with a cool you backpack, lose. you're just going to lose the hardware of it. Yeah, it's it looks it literally looks the exact same, and you can put it because I mean you're gonna have to take you're gonna have to take it off to mount the bird anyway because it's it's a harness that's on there, so you got to take it off. And so I guess you glue it on the back or however the taxidermist yeah. does it. Um, but it's yeah, the replica looks no different. You're doing us a, a huge service to try and keep this thing. And you're rolling. trying to help the birds, so don't be a jackass. Give the guys back their stuff. I mean, ain't it doing you no good anyways? No. I mean, because what, after how many days that thing goes dead anyway? Yeah, and it's it's uh, after how many days the tracker yeah. goes dead? I can follow it around your house for a couple <laughs> weeks. <laughs> See where... Which is, uh, so far, um, we've had a couple get killed pretty quick up there, um, which, you know, is part of it. They've all been returned. Everyone that's killed them has been super, almost apologetic that they killed oh. them. And I don't want them to be that way. Like, I, you know... Good for you. Congratulations. Here's where I'm going to send you a prepackaged, you know, FedEx box with your replica in it. Just send it back yeah. to me. And everyone's been super nice and super, you know, just interested in what we're doing. And I get you a free subscription to the website as well. Um, send your replica. And it, it's truly that simple. But I did have a guy and he asked me because he called me and said, I kill one of your trackers. And I said, I know. And uh, he said, All right, well, tell me a little bit about it. And I said, well, it's in your house. It's on the west side. Two days ago, you took it outside for four hours. <laughs> He's like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so, I mean, I, you know, like you can't. And we, we had a guy in Texas. Yeah, right. This two was two miles uh, from my lodge. Yeah. One, I, I showed y'all a couple of birds last yeah. time I was there that were by y'all's lodge. And then we had a guy in Texas. This was before, this was Manuel. This was before I had gotten involved in any of this GPS, GPS tracking. This was five years ago when he was banning a few birds down there. He banned a shoveler. A shoveler got killed in Texas. No one, the hunter didn't call him. No one called him. No one called him. He waited an appropriate amount of time, about a week, still didn't get a call. We found out where the house, you know, you can see where it is. You can see the address of the house the tracker sitting at. Went through county records, found out who owned the house, did some digging, got a phone number, called the guy. Hello, my name's Ben Well. When you were hunting, did you kill a duck maybe that, you know, had what looked like a backpack on it or, or maybe one of your friends did? Just giving the guy like a super easy yeah. out. No, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, you sure maybe at the hunt, you find it on the ground, or maybe you found it looks like a battery. Uh, you know, I, I, how'd you get this number? Do you live at 123 Cherry Street in such and such, such and such? Yeah. Well, my backpack is sitting in your kitchen, and it's been sitting there for four days. And you work at, and you told him where he worked, because he was driving there every day with the tracker. And the guy said, yeah, where do you want me to send it? So, you know, <laughs> some people are just trying to get away with it and keep it. And he told him, he said, I'll send you a replica. Yeah. And that's what the guy wanted. He wanted to mount the bird right. with it. You know, I drive by that pond a lot. And I look at it all mm -hmm. the time. And I think about the guy shooting the duck off that pond. I've never seen a duck on that pond, mm -hmm. ever. And I drive by there during hunting season. That's our way home from scouting. So I, I drive yeah. by it 70 to 80 days, at least during duck waterfowl season. I've still never seen a duck on it. I look at it every day, and it just blows my mind that – and I don't even know anybody that would hunt on the thing because the guy that owned it just passed away, and he wasn't a hunter. I don't know. Maybe pass shot it? I, I, I have, but who the hell would just stop and shoot a damn shoveler off of a fucking pond right there? <laughs> I mean, if you saw the pond, it don't even look there's – not a, there's not a weed or nothing in it. It's just a tank that they put water in for cows. And, but like I said, I've never seen a duck in it. And we sh we hunt a peanut field right next to it. And we kill a ton of birds right there. Geese, not many ducks. Not, yeah. no, not very many ducks. We kill a lot of geese. Yeah. We don't ever shoot ducks over there. Mm -mm. There's no water over there. It's just crazy. Is the, uh, are the regulations in Mexico to do a banding project as strenuous as the ones in Canada? Paperwork wise. You know, you know, the answer to that question. No. Just show up? No, you, no. I, there are regulations, and Manuel is um, is super respected there, and and so he no, and, and their setup is much better. Like their turnarounds quicker. Um, could I get a license in Mexico? Probably not. But could any credible, you know, national there do it? Certainly. Yeah. So it's just it's Mexico. It's just easier. I mean, well, it, it, their process is. Um, you know, and, and we have a super great relationship with CWS Canadian Wildlife Service, and they've been super helpful with us 
like what we need to do differently to get this off the ground. And I got nothing but love for them because they're giving us a chance. They're giving Jack Miner a chance. Um, you know, their turnaround time on this stuff was, 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 it took them a long time and they got a lot coming through their office. And, you know, I get that. Um, uh, but down there, the rule is, I think here, I think in Canada, the rule is they have three months and it's six months or 60 days before the project starts, whichever is later for them to tell you yes mm -hmm. or no, or to ask you questions. That's a long time. Um, in, in Mexico, they have five days to pose a question and they have 30 days to issue a response. And if they don't issue a response in 30 days, it's a default. Yes. And that's their, that's their situation. I love Mexico. So they make it, um, they make it, and, and frankly, you know, the, the resources down there are like for these, uh, they're just excited. Somebody wants to study something <laughs> and not ask them for any money right. for it. I mean, you know, it's, you're like Santa Claus. I mean, we're giving away tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment for you to do studies. I mean, I don't know why everyone in the country isn't calling me, asking me to come to their state to do right. this. I don't see why I'm not saying Santa Claus, but yeah. So either here nor there. Cause my, my point with it has always been, you know, I can go shoot birds in Canada in Saskatchewan and for 120 days, I can just fall them down the flyway and just buy one federal duck stand and get a license in every state, kill eight a day or whatever the limit is, wherever I am. And that's fine. But if I want to do some, I want to do this, I want to try my, do my good with it with this. Like I run into all these roadblocks because I want to put a few trackers on ducks. I mean, whatever. What's, I mean, is each, each place is just different. And I mean, it's just, what's been, what's been the, the hardest, what's been like the most asinine reason that you got for somebody not doing it? Well, you have to be, you have to be associated with academic study, mm -hmm. which I understand. They don't just want you throwing backpacks on this that, and the other. And so with, with Canadian Wildlife Service, what they told us is we needed to be associated with the college. And so we found the University of Windsor. They want to do a light pollution study because they got a bunch of greenhouses up there, a bunch of greenhouses, 5,000 acres in Essex County. Uh, and they put off a ton of light. And so they're going to study using these GPS units how that light affects or does not affect mallards and candy geese, right? And so that's what they're doing with the data. And then what I'm doing with the data is, is tangent, tangential. We're doing the 50 ducks thing with it to, to help fund it. And we're you know using it for childhood education to get more people into it. So you can't, and to that extent, I kind of understand, you can't just put backpack on to put backpacks on. But if you're associated with a college um, and you have a, I mean, you basically have to write a scientific dissertation to get a permit. Um, so, I mean, it's a, it's a hard process. Uh, the BBL is who does it in the States and then CWS does it at, uh, in Canada. Right. But once you got associated with Windsor, that opened up more doors for you. Yeah. Once we got associated with Windsor, it was, um, cause that fella, Dr. Oliver Love, um, he has done this before on Eiders. And so he had, he was, uh, like he was our, these guys are legit. They're not trying to you know, pervert the system. Right. And so once he did that, it was four months and a few questions and you know, fine tune a few details. And they said, you know, we had a, a conditional permit for a year. And if we do what we say, we'll do it's five year permit. What's uh, this light pollution study that they're doing? Do they think that it's mm. keeping birds from migrating or do they think that it is making them go more? Super good question. Like, one of the premises for that was, you know, the 9-11 memorials. They had a bunch of birds when they had those in New York run up there. They had a bunch of birds get in there and get confused and swirl mm -hmm. and do stuff like that. And it drew a bunch of birds to them. Um, these these greenhouses, to, to put it in perspective, Kingsville has Essex County, all of Essex County, has 150th the population of Detroit. It's 50 miles away. It puts off three times as much wow. light. So it's put off a tremendous amount of light. Um, Kingsville is the furthest point south in Canada as well, in mainland Canada. So it is kind of a great migration corridor as well. So there are a bunch of birds coming through there. Um, and so what that does to birds, they don't know, right. right? They don't know if they get confused. They don't know if they come to it. They don't know if they avoid it. Um, and, you know, now we will. Yeah. So. Well, it was, uh, I think it was Roy Carter not too long ago. He made a Facebook post about he had a piece of property that had like a light on a shed and the birds mm -hmm. would use that light 
on the barn or whatever as a marker to know where they were. So he's yeah. like, all, all, all them, any place that I've got, like I'm putting a light of some sort on there so that the birds can kind of yeah. use that place as a marker or use that light as a marker. I think it was Roy Carter. And might I, be given. And no one's saying that these lighthouses are bad at right. all. They could be. It could turn out it's the greatest thing for migrating waterfowl in the history of the world. You know, time will tell. But I might be giving him credit where it's not. But I'm pretty sure it was. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it's Roy Carter. Somebody can fact check me on that. Um, Throw it yeah, out there. I'm throwing a good good job, Roy Carter, on on your observation. So what else? What else we got going on with fifty ducks? Man, it's just uh, it's exciting to see where these birds are going to go. Um, we're going to do a naming contest uh, with your listeners. We talked about that, which I'm super excited about. Anybody listening, all you got to do is go follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, go to the website and give us your email. We'll pick one listener, and you get to name a duck or a goose, mallard or a goose, your choice. Whatever you want to name it, as long as uh, you know <laughs> we're being reasonable yeah. with, with what you're going to name it. Um, you get a free membership as well. Um, we'll put a link in the description of how to do that and that'll be fun. I'm excited to see what everybody comes up with there. Yeah, so go over that again. Just go to 50ducks.com, put your email in. Yep, down at the bottom of the page, there's an email sign up. I put it in there. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook and then we'll announce a winner in, uh, I don't know, when are you going to air? Uh, we'll give this it. will air tomorrow, the 15th. All right, we'll give it We'll do it at the end of the month. We'll announce winner at the end cool. of the month. Cool. So that'll give everybody a couple weeks. If you're late listening or whatever, you can play along. So yeah, just go down to the very bottom, uh, enter your email. It says email updates. Is that what it is? Yep. If you if you sign up for the website, you get the code, promo code, use the promo code Big Honker. That'll let you me, let me know that you heard it through this. This podcast. If you win, it's free. If you lose, you got a big discount with a big honker. So you gotta go subscribe to the website. Gotcha. Big Honker, sign up, Big Honker code. Um, we'll donate a bunch of money back to Jeff and Andy so they can keep the lights on to but Big Honker's code. Very cool. We'll announce a winner at the end of the month. I'm going to name my duck Sir Jeff Stanfield for the old English descent. Royalty. Yes, that's Roy right. Very, very regal. Very cool. Is that clear, though, on how to be in the contest? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just go to, the web, go, to your, go to your website, get signed up. Uh, yep. do all that use the promo code big honker. You, so I know you're in the drawing. You, we'll do it at the end of the month. Use the promo code big. Anybody that uses the promo code big honker is automatically in the drawing. We'll pick it at the end of the month. You're in the drawing. And then you'll get to name a duck. And, and we have memberships. For or, we have tons of or teachers. Goose. Or goose. We have tons of teachers on here. Cause I get emails from teachers a lot. Or, ki- or people that's got kids in school too. get your classes. Or, especially if you've got kids from eighth grade under where they're really going to be soaking in some knowledge. High school kids are, Smarter than everybody, anyways. Sure, but man, elementary yes. kids and some junior high, junior high is kind of fringy. But still, get get them. This is be great. Science teachers out there should be all. Every school in America should have a science class. Should be doing this. You teach them geography. You teach them about biology. It's it's just a great thing right there. So jump on it. Yeah. No. See, send me an email if you're a teacher. Send me an email. It's Greer G R E E R at five zero ducks dot com. Send me an email. Tell me where you teach. Tell me what you teach. And I will set you up that week with a free account. And like I said, we're going to get this in 5,000 classrooms in five years. That's my mission. So please shoot me an email. Make my job easier. Don't make me find you. <laughs> Very good. All right, Greer. It's been a lot of fun. A lot of cool things are happening with uh, with 50 Ducks. And I cannot wait to uh, watch and see what all this, see what all happens whenever we start getting some north winds. These birds are going to start moving. And that's going to make for some great data. start moving. Go follow the Big Honker. Y'all got your Big Honker Mallard. There's a search bar in the top right-hand corner of that map. You just type in the Big Honker, and your Mallard will pop up, and you can follow him along. He's being pretty still right now. I think it's a, a hint, actually. Listen. She's being pretty pretty still right now, but who knows? She might live three years and fly to the North Pole. She's, she's, she's biding her time is what she's doing. Hope, hope, she's getting, hope. getting all the fat reserves stored up, and then she's going to make a big move here later. So. Stay at Arkansas. A lot, lot like Jeff, just just yeah. waiting for the move. That's Wait, right. Waiting for the right time. Yeah. <laughs> and stay at Arkansas, them hillbillies to shoot you. Greer, we appreciate you. Hook them horns. Go dogs, buddy. Big game Saturday. Wish you the best. God bless you, and thank you for what you do. 50 ducks. Jeff, Andy, pleasure to be on the show again. Really appreciate yes, it. Thank you, awesome. Greer. You have a good day. See you, bud. Bye. 50ducks.com. There is no excuse if you are a teacher, if you have kids that are in school, put, you know, put a little bit of 
Give us a little bit of arms here. Outside the box teacher. education. Way to go. <clears throat> real world, real world type stuff. Yep. But um, yeah, super cool stuff. Go to 50ducks.com, become a member of the 50 Ducks uh, website, and then use our promo code Big Honker. You will automatically be entered to win this drawing. You'll get to name a duck. You'll have a free membership. It's 60 bucks a year. That's that's like he said earlier. That's the price of two shotgun shell boxes. Um, it's less than what a duck call cost. You're going to get to follow these birds around all winter. It's going to be incredibly fun to to watch these birds move as we start getting north winds and into uh, this this hunting season. So, ducks.com, get it going. It could be a free willy movie. You know, kids in a classroom fall in love with a duck. They go out there. They jump <laughs> on the hunters, get mad at them, trying to save little Susie Duck from, right. from her demise. Thank y'all for listening to us. God bless y'all. Have a great week. Watch for deer. Go watch. Uh, go check out all of our sponsors. Go check out Hemp Hill Farm. Use our promo code BHP. It has helped me with some of my jujitsu ouchies. Mallard Bay, Mitch Hall, Stanford, ooh, Stanford Outfitters, Double T British Kennels, Lucky Duck, Mossberg, Looking Glass Podcast, MLR Graphics, Shin Gear, Dirty Duck Coffee, Bull and Briar Leather, Ducks Unlimited, Dive Bomb Entry, Pacific Calls, and Boss Shot Shells. 